Hello. Welcome back. In previous videos, we have discussed the concept of a free particle where the potential is zero. In this case, a particular solution to the Schrodinger equation is the traveling plane waves. We have also discussed how to calculate the current carried by these plane waves. In the presence of a potential barrier, these waves can be scattered, such as being reflected or transmitted. In this video, we shall learn the propagation matrix method, which will allow us to compute the transmission and reflection probabilities of these scattered waves. We shall also see that these waves can transmit across the barrier despite having an energy lower than the potential barrier, a phenomenon known as quantum tunneling. Let's begin with the time-independent Schrödinger equation as shown, where the potential V describe a rectangular potential barrier. The potential can be divided into three regions, where the potential is a constant in each region, denoted as V1, V2, and V3. In each of these regions, the potential is a constant, which we denoted as V0. Assuming that the electron energy is larger than the potential energy, we can rewrite the Schrödinger equation as follows, where the wave vector Q defined this way is a real positive number. The solution to this differential equation are plane waves, which in general includes plane waves with positive and negative Q. We note that these solutions have an implicit time dependence as shown, thus allowing us to associate a forward propagating component with complex amplitude A, and a backward propagating with amplitude B. When the energy E is less than the potential V, then the scattering states are evanescent. The Schrödinger equation can be written as follows, where kappa is defined as a positive real number. Here, the solution are real exponential functions. The exponential function with complex amplitude A decays as x becomes more positive, while the exponential with amplitude B decays as x becomes more negative. Alternatively, we can also incorporate both the evanescent and propagating scattering solutions using a single complex wave vector k. Written as follows, k as defined will be real positive when energy E is larger than V0, and imaginary positive when E is smaller than V0. This will be the description we use for the remaining of this video. Let's consider the problem with just a single potential step as shown. We write the piecewise solutions psi1 and psi2 for regions 1 and 2. The solutions in each region are characterized by the wave vector kj, and complex amplitudes, aj, and, bj. These are also called the scattering amplitudes. We have learnt that these A and B amplitudes are related via the continuity of the wave functions and its derivative at the step. Imposing these continuity requirements of the wave functions and letting x equals to zero then allows us to arrive at the following equations relating A1, B1, A2 and B2. These two equations can be written in matrix form as shown, which relates the scattering amplitudes of region 1 to that or region 2. With simple algebra, we can express the scattering amplitudes vector in region 1 in terms of the product of a 2 by 2 matrix with the scattering amplitudes vector in region 2. We call this 2 by 2 matrix the step propagation matrix. We see that the step propagation matrix contains only the wave vectors k1 and k2. So, we have managed to describe how the scattering amplitude vectors transform upon scattering with an abrupt potential step. How about the simple case of mere free propagation of the wave for a distance L? In this case, there is no potential step, so the wave vector k would not change. We simply incur a phase given by exponential plus or minus i k L, depending on whether it is propagating in the forward or backward direction. Thus, we see that the action of free propagation just incur a phase factor to the scattering amplitudes as shown and we can again express the scattering amplitudes vector before and after propagation in terms of a propagation matrix, herein denoted as the free propagation matrix. Okay. Back to the scattering by a rectangular barrier problem. We have three scattering regions, each characterized by a scattering amplitudes vector. As we have shown earlier, the scattering amplitudes vector in adjacent regions are related via a propagation matrix. For example, 
A1 and B1 are related to A2 and B2 via a step propagation matrix. The A2 and B2 amplitudes before and after propagation through the region 2 is related via the free propagation matrix. These scattering amplitudes are written such that we can substitute the amplitudes of the later stage into the previous one, as indicated by the red arrows. This allows us to concatenate the propagation matrices, allowing us to express the scattering amplitudes vector in region 1 with that of region 3. The multiplication of these three matrices can be performed with software like Mathematica. Effectively, we can obtain a 2x2 two two matrix known as the propagation matrix. We denote the elements of this matrix P11, P12 and so on. In previous video, we have introduced the concept of probability current. The probability currents in regions 1 and 2, expressed in terms of their respective scattering amplitudes, are as follows. We see that the current consists of a contribution due to the forward propagating wave given by A square, minus the backward propagating wave by B square. Consider an incident wave from the left, characterized by the amplitude A1. We can define a quantity called the reflection probability, which is defined as the ratio of the current reflected off the rectangular barrier, to the current incident on the barrier. Similarly, we can define the transmission probability as the ratio of the current that transmit out of the barrier, to the current incident on the barrier. So, let's gather all our key ingredients. We have shown that the scattering amplitudes vector in region 1 and 3 are related via the propagation matrix, whose matrix elements we know how to obtain. We are interested in the case with current injecting from the left of the rectangular barrier due to A1. Thus we will only have a reflected current characterized by B1, and a transmitted current characterized by A3. We can therefore set B3 to 0. We have also the expressions for the reflection and transmission probability, expressed in terms of the scattering amplitudes. The propagation matrix allows us to express these amplitudes in terms of the matrix elements of the propagation matrix as shown. We see that only P11 and P21 are relevant here. For your reference, I show here the explicit expressions for P11 and P21. We remind you that the wave vectors K can either be real or imaginary, depending on whether if the electron energy is above or below the barrier as we previously discussed. Okay. We are now ready for a concrete example. This can be implemented very easily with programming tools such as MATLAB. Just leave a comment here if you would like me to also share the script in the description box. We consider here an electron with a free electron mass, a rectangular barrier with a length of 10 nanometers, and barrier height of 1 electron volt. Using the method we discussed, we plot here the transmission and reflection probability as a function of energy, as shown in the red and blue curves respectively. We see that the transmission increases drastically when the electron energy exceeds the barrier energy of 1 eV. The barrier is highlighted in yellow. We see the transmission quickly approaches unity, and it oscillates, but never exceeding 1. One can check that the maxima of the transmission occurs when the wave vector K2 multiply by the length L or integers multiple of pi. This resonant condition coincides with the condition where the half wavelength of electron corresponds to the width of the barrier L. It is also easy to check that T plus R must equals unity. Now, let's focus in the energy region within the barrier of less than one electron volt. We see that the transmitted current is not zero, despite the electron energy being smaller than the barrier. This phenomenon is called tunneling. We see that the tunneling current increases when the electron mass is reduced. This is a quantum mechanical phenomenon and has no classical analog. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.